Well, to a breakthrough now on an experimental COVID-19 vaccine. It is being reported today. The drug company AstraZeneca and scientists at Britain's Oxford University have seen early signs of success in the first human trial. For more on this, let's go to London right now. The CBC's Cindy Palm standing by. Cindy, nice to see you. Talk to us about the results. Well, the results uh, are actually really positive, Michael, because they show that the vaccine is safe and that it induces a, an immune response. However, it is still unclear if this vaccine will actually protect against COVID-19, which is the big question. There's a lot of progress, but that still needs to be answered. So more tests need to be done. And just to be clear, this is the result of the early trials of Oxford University's vaccine. The university has already moved to later stages of its human trials. And it is one of only two uh, teams of scientists around the world, the second one being a Chinese firm that has actually moved to the later stage of its human trials, meaning that it is in the lead when it comes to finding a vaccine. So, uh, as you say, optimistic early news here, but so talk to us a bit more about the potential for a vaccine. Should we expect one soon then, given the success so far, or is that still too optimistic? Yeah, that's something that everyone is certainly hoping for in, or, in order for life to return back to normal. But today, the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, he cautioned against being too optimistic. This is what he said. Take a listen. Obviously, I'm hopeful. I got my fingers crossed. But to say that I'm 100 percent confident that we'll get a vaccine uh, this year or indeed next year uh, is, alas, just, uh, you know, an exaggeration. We're not there yet. The British pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca, which is working with Oxford University, wants to create an international supply chain so that if and when this vaccine is shown to be effective, it can supply it to, to people around the world and not just here in the UK. It has inked a deal with the UK government to supply 100 million doses of the vaccine to the British people in September. But of course, this is all dependent on whether or not this trial is successful in the end. Michael. Okay, Cindy, thank you for that. The CBC's Cindy Palm in London. Well, we're going to stay on this story right now and bring into the conversation Dr. Matthew Outen. He is an infectious disease specialist at the Jewish General Hospital in Montreal. So, Dr. Outen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on, Michael. Listen, I, I want to begin with a tweet from the editor of the Lancet Medical Journal. This is where the early results are being published. And he says the vaccine being developed at Oxford is, quote, safe, well-tolerated, and immunogenic. Uh, now, obviously, words of caution around this. Uh, there are still many challenges ahead. But I do want to begin here with the, uh, I guess, potential positives. What good news do you take from this early result? Uh, several different areas of good news. I mean, uh, the process for developing a vaccine is very well established. It's obviously very complicated. And because of the nature of this pandemic, things are being uh, accelerated as much as possible while still getting enough data to know that the vaccine is both safe and efficacious. So the data presented today uh, is a summary of phase one and two, which are the phases in vaccine development where you're really looking mostly at safety as well as proof that there is at least some mean potentially meaningful response uh, that the vaccine generates. And uh, the current data certainly shows that. This is, of course, not the same thing as showing that it works well in the real world. There's a lot more variables still to be studied, and that's really going to be the, uh, the uh, process now for the next phase, the phase three trials to come. Okay, well, let's break that down then. What still needs to be done here? So you want to, for example, uh, study this in a larger number of people simply because larger numbers means that you have more confidence in the data. You want to be looking at various groups. For example, does this vaccine provide the same efficacy for younger people compared to older people? There may be reason, reasons why older people have immune systems that may not respond as well to uh, a dose that may uh, determine differences in dosing size or dosing uh, frequency, for example. Same thing goes with uh, adverse effects. I mean, these are very encouraging data, but I believe this, uh, this trial summarizes data that's been garnered over about eight weeks. Now, eight weeks is great for capturing short-term uh, uh, measurements in terms of uh, immunogen immunogenicity as well as side effects, but eight weeks does not capture long-term issues. You need to have longer 
uh, periods of uh, data collection. That's another thing that phase three is going to tell us. So is it fair to say that, that even though there, there's enthusiasm around the early uh, research here, that this vaccine might still be a failure? Uh, it is possible. We have many uh, vaccines uh, that have done this before where they look promising in early phase one trials, but ultimately fail subsequent uh, phases. So by no means is this a lock. The researchers are going to uh, uh, obviously be approaching this, or should be approaching this with an abundance of uh, caution. Keep in mind that I think at uh, last count, there's well over 200 different vaccine candidates, including almost 20 that are in some form of clinical trial right now. So this is by no means the one and only uh, vaccine that is moving forward, but this is an important step uh, in that whole process. Okay, uh, and this is a huge theoretical here, but I'm wondering if we can maybe use that as a jumping off point though, because uh, say everything does go well with this Oxford developed vaccine, uh, say it is proven at the end of the day to be effective. How then does it get distributed to countries like Canada, considering it seems that this study does not include any Canadian component? That's an excellent point, and uh, uh, there's a whole measure of different uh, factors here. There's economics, there's, uh, there's politics. I mean, I was very encouraged to hear that they're talking about a uh, global supply chain. I mean, AstraZeneca really is a multinational uh, firm and has connections all over, the, uh, all over the world. But as was already mentioned, I believe the UK has purchased uh, 100 million doses, and I would assume that that positions them to sort of get a large amount of the early production, assuming that this uh, uh, goes into sort of uh, full-scale production, which necessarily will mean that other countries will have some delay unless they have some process for sort of triaging need. For example, if there is a country that's having a particular outbreak, they may have uh, proportions so that uh, the first available doses go there rather than places that don't have uh, quite the same disease burden. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and again, uh, let's move away from this specific study because I find it interesting, uh, you and others quoting the fact that there are now some 20 vaccines uh, at the human trial stage or uh, being tested at this moment in time. Does that mean that a vaccine might be available soon? I, I know in the early days of this pandemic, and which really just a few months ago, people were talking about a year and a half, maybe two years. But given at the speed that you're seeing right now, could we actually see a vaccine, say, before the end of this year? You raise a good question. I think it is possible we could, but again, keep in mind there's a whole difference between successfully completing phase one, phase two, phase three trials, and then all the necessities of manufacturing on large scale and, uh, and distributing. Having said all of that, I think we need to prepare ourselves uh, for the worst case scenario, which is that there is no early vaccine that's available. So we cannot let up on all the other manu maneuvers and measures that we know have been effective things like uh, adequate uh, production of personal protective equipment, all of the preventative measures to reduce community spread, the physical distancing, the hand hygiene, and the non-medical mask wearing, all of those remain essential, as well as all the infection control and public health intervention, the contact tracing, and uh, isolation and so forth. We can't stop those until the vaccine is in our hands and distributed and uh, being given out because if we uh, put all of our eggs in one basket and it turns out for some reason the vaccine doesn't work well, then we're going to be asking for trouble. Dr. Outen, thank you for helping us understand all of that. My distinct pleasure. And that is Dr. Matthew Outen, an infectious disease specialist at the Jewish General Hospital in Montreal.